Welcome to the Smarter E podcast, a podcast for and with the creators of the new energy world. If you're following the international press at the moment, you might have noticed that Brazil is not exactly scoring with overly positive news in regards to sustainability. What therefore easily gets overlooked in the current debates is that Brazil is one of the most interesting nations in regards to photovoltaic. With 4.5 to 6.5 sun hours per day, Brazil has one of the highest levels of insulation in the world, a fact it is strongly capitalizing on. So in this episode, we want to set politics aside and focus on the mechanics behind the PV boom in Brazil, the regulatory strategy and and the potential development in the future. So before we start, a quick thanks to our partner for this episode, Apex Brazil, the Brazilian trade and investment promotion agency. Apex Brazil works to promote Brazilian products and services abroad and to attract foreign investment to strategic sectors of the Brazilian economy, including renewable energies. As a guest, I'm pleased to welcome Rodolfo Zamian Danilov. He's currently the general coordinator of energy information and studies at the Secretariat of Energy Planning and Development of the Ministry of Mines and Energy of Brazil. He coordinates the elaboration of the National Energy Plan and the Decennial Energy Expansion Plan. Welcome, Rodolfo. Hi, Zakis. Thank you. I'm very glad to be here and participating today as your guest. In order to get everybody on the same page first, maybe let's have a look uh, into the basics. So why is Brazil so interesting in regards to PV at the moment? Well, Zakis, I think it's a combination of some factors. One of them is that the PV energy source is not new anymore in Brazil. We have surpassed this initial phase of the first implementation of the first projects. And the technology has been establishing and maturing well here. And it's interesting to point out that the time needed for this process was relatively short. So PPAs of solar energy have been established for more or less six years now. A second factor is that it has become more competitive against other sources on the national market. Along with wind energy, these two sources have become the most competitive ones in the past few years. And last year, solar was the most competitive energy source in our energy auction for new power plants. For instance, solar prices in long-term PPAs have decreased between 70 and 80% since 2014. So every year, we have a centralized energy auction where the local distribution companies, they, they acquire long-term PPAs from new power plants. For solar energy, they are usually up to 20 years long. Uh, so last year, the average price for solar, for PV solar, in these energy auctions was between 14 and $17 per megawatt hour. And I think this is a very competitive level of price. So what are we talking about in um, total PV installed in Brazil at the moment? Yeah, we have just surpassed the, the, the milestone of 5 gigawatts, including both centralized generation and also distributed generation. It now represents 3% of our installed capacity. It can seem small, but it's, I think uh, it's just a photograph of a very uh, rapid movement that we are observing. The, the total installed capacity has doubled over the past 12 months and distributed generation is, has increased by a factor of 3.7. So I think this is very expressive. So when we look at distributed generation alone, it now composes almost half of the total PV installed capacity. And I think this is very much uh, aligned with the concept to empower consumers, specifically with distributed generation. And this is also aligned with the current market reform we are debating here, where we are aiming to give real power of choice for consumers and allowing them to participate more actively on the market. That sounds like a really exciting development. And uh, before we look at where it's heading in the coming years, I just quickly to complete the picture. So what other modes of electricity generation are important in the Brazilian energy mix? So what is it competing with? So historically, Brazil has relied a lot on hydropower. And, and it still composes of, uh, an important bulk of our energy mix. Uh, today, with high, large hydropower plants and also the small ones, they compose almost 63% of the total installed capacity. And, and we still have a lot of thermal power plants, especially gas and biomass. And wind energy has gained a lot of importance also in the past decade, and it now composes almost 9% of our installed capacity. 
So when it comes to the carbon footprint, it sounds like Brazil actually has already quite a good energy mix at the moment. So let's come back to the PV sector. What kind of growth are you expecting in the future? Will it continue the, this dynamic situation? So yes, yeah, so we expect V generation to continue to grow in Brazil for the next 10 and 30 years. For the next 10 years, we have some simulations that show that uh, solar installed capacity can grow to 206%. And for the next 30 years, we have some scenarios and most of them indicate that the solar, insta solar installed capacity can reach between 30 and 90 gigawatts in the year 2050, considering centralized generation only. And this will represent something between 5 and 16% of the total. And in some scenarios, it can reach over 100 gigawatts. So although the uncertainty for the next 30 years is large, it's interesting to note that almost all scenarios we have indicate PV sector to continue to grow. You mentioned that, of course, it's difficult um, to predict um, what's happening in 30 years. And if you want to hit that milestone of uh, 90 gigawatt in 2050, what are the challenges on the road? Or what are potential roadblocks when it comes to, I don't know, regulations or taxes or tariffs? Okay, Zach, because there are some important challenges that we have to deal with to, to continue to promote the PV energy expansion. One of them is, is the issue of generation adequacy. So with more wind and solar energy in our energy mix, we have to look at how to be sure that we can provide energy at any time for consumers. We have done this in the past with hydropower plants, but their expansion will be slower than the other sources. So we need to find new ways to, to assess this properly and value this as a product in a proper way so that the market can respond to it. So the market now is undergoing a large debate for reform and modernization, including the implementation of a capacity mechanism. So we can value properly the availability of supply. So, and a second challenge we're dealing with here is the impacts of distributed generation for the distribution companies. Today, they are still responsible this for acquiring energy for all end users. And so with more small consumers adopting distributed generation, there's a relevant reduction of the net demand these companies perceive. And so their logic of demand risk changes. It is important to keep in mind that distributed generation is part of the energy transition and empowerment of consumers. Therefore, the current discussion regarding this challenge is one of the scope of the incentive that is provided for this type of generation and not on whether to provide it or not. So these are two challenges to promote a sustainable expansion of solar energy here in Brazil. And I think they are quite complex ones to solve. So quite a complex problem to solve. Um, so how does then the, actually the Ministry of Mines and Energy of Brazil support the PV sector and help to solve this puzzle? There are some ways and some instruments that Brazil is adopting to support PV, the PV sector. One of them is the compensation system that, that I mentioned. And now we are scrutinizing better to see how to solve this unwanted consequence. But other uh, support mechanisms that I can mention is that centralized solar power generation is among the incentivized sources in Brazil. And so they have some discounts on the transmission systems. And the national and some local developments, they provide some very attractive financing products for solar generation. Something else that I would like to point out is that Solar provision energy has been among the products of our annual, annual auctions. And this is very important to consolidate the industry, especially when solar energy was not so competitive as it is today. And lastly, the federal government has now exempted the import taxes on PV panels until the end of next year. So although it's temporary, I think it comes in a very important time due to the COVID-19 crisis. So in that regard, then it looks uh, like you, you've taken the right steps to get out of the COVID crisis and also have the PV sector get out of it unscathed. So um, as I mentioned in the introduction, you're also responsible for the National, en for the National Energy Plan and the Decennial Energy Expansion Plan. So what exactly are these two? Yeah, these are the two instruments that we have for medium long term energy planning in Brazil. They are both published by the ministry with the support of our any research office that we call EPE. And both of them look at all energy sources and technologies that compose our energy mix, including, of course, PV solar power. The decennial energy expansion plan that we call PDE is published annually 
and you use it to indicate our perspective on the expansion of the energy industry for the next 10 years. And I think in a sense, the plan provides the best information the government has on the market for all the agents. So it also acts to level information and to indicate opportunities for investments. And this is one of the main uh, products the ministry has today. So the other one is the National Energy Plan. We call it PNE. And for this one, I'm very glad to inform that the new edition is now in public consultation. It hasn't been published since 2007, and we are trying to restore the importance of this long-term energy plan. And in, this, in its essence, it is a collection of studies that provides support for the ministry to design the long-term strategy to expand the energy sector. We use, on the quantitative side, we use an exploratory approach so we can visualize several possible scenarios of the future and then identify the opportunity and the costs. And with these inputs, the government can have an open, structured and robust debate with society and it can have better long-term choices. Naturally, the uncertainties for the next 30 years are huge and it's precisely with long-term planning that we can avoid technological lock-ins and reduce our regret costs. Before we end, um, I would just, we've, so far we've always been talking about um, PV, so um, energy uh, production. How about storage? How big of a topic is storage in Brazil, electrical energy storage? It has gradually gained importance in Brazil, although it is still incipient here. Uh, there are some research projects going ongoing, but it's still no commercial units. Again, talking about other power, you use the, the, the dams to store energy. But of course, now this is losing a relative importance in terms of percentage, and we need to address the issue of flexibility. And I think energy storage is a global trend to address this problem. And for Brazil specifically, I'd like to point out two of the technologies. One of them is pumped hydropower storage, and the other one is hydrogen. So the, one for, the first one is interesting for the very reason that Brazil has several hydropower plants. And so we have a large potential to use these technologies. Another positive point is that among all the storage technologies, this is the one that is the most used around the world. So I think it's a mature technology and it's a positive factor for us to adopt here in the future. So in the second one, the hydrogen, it is still undergoing its learning curve. We need more investment in research and development to reduce its costs and for it to be attractive from the market perspective. And as a final remark, this too and any other kind of energy storage, for it to be attractive for the market, again, we need to value the availability of supply better. And if we look at both sectors, so a Brazilian PV and the storage sector, what's your take on investments, both um, coming from an international or from a national um, side? So until 2029, for centralized solar generation, we expect to need $7.6 billion. And for decentralized generation, I expect the, to need $8.2 billion. So you see that PV energy might require almost $16 billion in the next 10 years. And for the next 30 years, I have some data from Bloomberg. They estimated the need of $85 billion until the year 2050 for small and utility scale PV plants. And I think this is very expressive. For batteries, Bloomberg estimates the need of almost $14 billion in, in batteries until the year 2050. The Brazilian market has always received a lot of investment from international companies, so national companies are still very relevant in undergoing the necessary investments. But the importance of international investment has increased over the years and, of course, will continue very important for the next decades. Thanks a lot, Rodolfo. It sounds like in regards to PV, Brazil really is on the right track. Um, it's a perfect combination of, of one of the highest insulations around the world, an administration uh, willing to shape the regulation in a beneficial way and investors also providing the necessary capital for the growth of PV in Brazil really to take off also in the future. So thanks a lot, Rodolfo. Thank you, Zach. It was a pleasure to talk to you today. Stay tuned for more episodes of the Smarter E podcast. 
If you want to find out more about the situation of PV in South America and learn also more about energy storage systems and renewable energies, then visit the Smart to E South America, the most important innovation hub for empowering new energy solutions. So visit thesmarttoe.com/br.